Hey guys, it's been a while since I made my last video, so um, I just really haven't been in the video making mood. I've been really busy. I'm moving my entire book of mirrors online. I had talked about that in an earlier video. Um, I finally decided to do it, and I'm really apparently taking it seriously, and I'm cataloging everything, all my stones and my herbs in terms of correspondences for the ones that I want, the ones that I have, and the ones that I see myself using. All my herbs, all my oils, therapeutic and magical uses, moving all of my Book of Mirrors entries online, and I've decided to move my Book of Shadows online as well, just to make it easier. So I've been really busy with that, and I still have so much to do, it's insane. So that's why I really haven't been making videos. I've been rather engrossed with that. Plus the Circle of Solitaries is really starting to take off. We've had like 20 million new members on our meetup group in the past like four days. So that's been kind of taking up some time too. But I really wanted to make a video today and I didn't know what to talk about. So I decided to talk about something simple, which is magical names. Magical names could seem like a really elementary topic. But I'm going to take it from a different kind of viewpoint. The reason we have magical names first is because of a few reasons. Number one, you become a different person as you progress in the craft. You start to see yourself changing. You see the world in a different way, and it's just a whole new you. And to signify that, we take a magical name. The other reason is... Probably, I guess, because of secrecy, uh, anonymity. It's just, that's not a huge one I've seen. I've only seen a few people that say that that's their number one reason for having a magical name. There's also the fact that some people view something called the ritual persona, and that when you step into circle or into a pagan group, you are a different person literally and figuratively. Um, and I'll probably do a different video on that. I've been meaning to do that. But to signify that different person and not just the changes within your mundane self, they will take a magical name for that other side of them. Which is it's kind of a difficult concept for some people to grasp. I don't know if I technically subscribe to it or not. Part of me does, but part of me really finds it odd. So, how do you choose your magical name? There are a bunch of different ways to do it. A lot of people, if you're in a coven, will have a coven name and a personal name. Or, if you're not in a coven, you'll probably have a public name and a personal name. I know I do, and a lot of people do. Some people just have one. But because some people believe that there's a lot of power in names, they'll have one name that they have just for them and the gods. It's kind of a Rumpelstiltskin kind of thing, you know? If you know someone's name, you can do work magic on them. You, can, I, I don't know if I technically believe in that or not, because, I mean, I do, but it's not my main reason for having two names, because I believe you can work magic on anyone if you have a clear enough picture of them. You don't need their true name. It might strengthen your spell, but you can do the spell no matter what. So... Not that I'm giving anyone ideas, but <laughs> so I do it mainly for privacy because that that's something between me and the gods. Only I know the invocations I use for them and the names I use for them and only they know my magical name. So that's why I do it. It's personal. It's a bond between you and the gods that no one else can break, no one else is in on. The other way you can find it is just looking through names. Some people use numerology to find names that might add up to their life number or their birth number or whatever you- they're different numbers. I'm not a numerology expert, so um, you can probably look that up if you're really interested in making sure your magical name adds up correctly. It's not a it's not a requirement for most people. When you're looking for your magical name, you need to think not just about numerology, you need to think about what really speaks to you. There was an article on Witchbox about this. A lot of people are after the most mystical sounding name ever, and that's not really how it should be. If a mystical sounding name sounds 
awesome to you and it suits you personally, who you're becoming and who you hope to be, fine, use it. But it's not just about sounding mystical and mysterious and special. It's about really speaking to your true self. So if, you know, rainbow smurf liquor, as my friend Cindy on Wiccan Together so eloquently par parodied, is your magical name, if that truly speaks to you, you might want to make it your personal magical name because you have every right in the world to call yourself Rainbow Smurf Licker and everyone else has every right in the world to make fun of you. <laughs> That's how it is. I mean, you have to think about it. You have to think about how you spell it too. If you do spell something incorrectly in your name, there has to be a reason for it. For example, my name Ashlyn. Uh, Ashlyn is usually spelled A-I-S-L-I and then I chose to substitute a Y because it fit numero numerologically speaking and because the meaning of the word Lynn with a Y is different than the wor word with an I. The word with a Y isn't Gaelic, but it was the word I was looking for to add into my name. So that's why I did it. I'm not one of those people that has to substitute every I in every word with a Y. And if you're doing that, you have to really back it up because it is a trend in the magical community. So you just really have to think about how you're coming off to people with your magical name too. And it's not all about what other people think, but if you're gung-ho about your name and you love it and it really speaks to you and it's Rainbow Smurf Liquor and you get online and you're just shocked that people find that odd, you kind of need to take a step back and look at it. So. That's kind of my two cents on magical names. You're probably gonna have several in your life. Some Very few people have one that just suits them for the entirety of their life. It's not unheard of, but it's not as common as you would think. I have already gone through three names. Two of them were when I was really, really, really fluffy, so they no longer even remotely suit me. And the one I have now, I've had for a few years, and I don't see it changing anytime soon unless something major happens, because it really does speak to me on a, on a very deep level. It's also not unheard of to not have a magical name. Sometimes people's parents do just fine and their given name is really who they are, it really sums it up. So if you don't feel called to have a magical name, don't freak out. Not everyone needs one. So I guess I will talk to you guys later. I'm probably gonna do a video again right now because I have some questions that I wanna throw out there to you guys. So. Talk to you guys later.